Good morning everyone, welcome to morning prayer uh, this morning, Thursday the 6th of August. I'm back in my study, I'm afraid, I uh, haven't had a chance to to get out, another one of those busy weeks. Um, so I'll, I'll try and find something more, more exotic next week. Um, you can send me to the Bahamas if you like and I'll do it from there. Um, but we'll see what happens next week. So today, morning prayer. Today in the church uh, we commemorate the Transfiguration. So that's um, something you might just want to keep in your mind as we think uh, about morning prayer today. If you're following on along with uh, readings at home, the ones that um, won't necessarily say now, but the psalm for today, if you want to read it later, is Psalm 27. And the Old Testament reading is 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 to 16. 1 Kings 19, 1 to 16. And the New Testament reading, which we shall hear in a moment, is 1 John chapter 3, 1 to 3. So let us pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so the Thursday morning um, canticle. Splendour and majesty are yours, O God. You are exalted as head over all. Blessed you are you, God of Israel, for ever and ever. For yours is the greatness, the power, the glory and the splendour and the majesty. Everything on heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Riches and honour come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. Yours is the power and the strength to all. And now we give you thanks, our God, and praise your glorious name. For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Splendour and majesty are yours, O God. You are exalted as head over all. And that canticle comes uh, from 1 Chronicles, and you may recognise a lot of it from our communion service. All our liturgy that we use on a Sunday morning in our communion service comes from the Bible. It's not words that are made up. They're words that are already in our scriptures and just put together to form our liturgy on a Sunday morning. So I'm sure you will recognise those words. So our reading from this morning is from the 1 John chapter 3, 1 to 3. See what the lo love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that they did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that um, letter written by John, um, and he writes uh, three letters in the New Testament, um, and he, he's writing to, to the Christians um, that he is sort of overseeing, 
and and there's been quite a schism uh, in his church and and some are saying um it's it's the age old argument about um whether god is fully jesus is fully god or or fully human and and how that is and and there's an arguments going on and and john is writing to say look we we are god's children and you know, stop arguing we are to love each other um, and to be and we are loved by him as 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 children and i know sometimes that's a difficult concept for us to to behold because some we, we all have different experiences of parenting of, of being parents ourselves um and how that can be difficult at times and um you know, children are their own people and sometimes they've grown up to be what we wanted them to be, what we expected them to be, and something there. Sometimes they're entirely different and mostly um mostly they're a joy and we've and we hope and pray that they've grown into good human beings. But that doesn't always happen, does it? You know, every criminal that we see is is someone's son or daughter. And our own parents, um, some of us uh, have had excellent parenting and had lovely parents that have really loved us and some have found our parents difficult and we couldn't wait to get out and perhaps relationships have broken down. So it's so difficult, um, this idea of God the Father and loving us like a parent if we haven't had that parenting ourselves or haven't found that parenting our own children if indeed we have any children of our own um how, how do we relate that it is it is a difficult one isn't it um and easy for some and not so easy for others um i've been very lucky and had lovely parents and um so far got lovely children and no, they're doing all right. Um, but I can't say that I've been the best parent all the time. I'm, I'm sure I've got things wrong. Don't quiz the children. They'll tell you too much. But um, it's a difficult concept. So I don't know how we can relate that to our own lives. But it's just God loves us so much that he died for us. If you can imagine loving someone that you would give your life for that person, then perhaps you have a tiny inkling of how much God loves us. And as I've said before, God knows everything about us. Every tiny little thing, all those dreadful thoughts, he knows them all and he still loves us. I, I just find that amazing to know that um, I am so loved, even though God knows what I what I think sometimes. You know, even if you catch yourself and stop yourself, you still had those thoughts. So, what is it that John's writing to his churches, um, and that God is saying to us? Well, I think we can see some of that in the Transfiguration. When Jesus was on the top of that mountain and um, Peter and John and James were there and they, they saw it um, and they saw Jesus transfigured um, into this amazing light and glowing face um, um, and, and Peter was so astounded by it all that he said oh stop I must I must build you a build you a temple here a tabernacle here and I must do this and and I'll build one for Elijah and uh, and Abraham and 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 Jesus stops him and, and says no you've, you've got it wrong I'm not asking you to do that what I'm asking you to do is to love and to love others and that's what Jesus asks us to do, to love others as we are loved, to imagine what that love is, to transfigure ourselves, because let's face it, it's not always easy to love other people. Sometimes it's not even easy to love the ones that we love. 
So we have to work at it because God has shown us that love and we must take that love out and show others that love. So let's pray. Let's pray for help in loving others. So Father God, we bring to you the needs of all people for whose salvation you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die. We pray for our Queen and our government, for leaders of all nations. We think of people who are divided by national enmity, religious intolerance, racial prejudice. We pray for all those people who are difficult to love. We pray for the perpetrators of crime. For those who are persecuting our Christian brothers and sisters around the world. And we pray love into those people who are so eaten up by hate that they have lost sight of you. Lord Jesus, where there's hatred, help us to sow love. We pray for husbands and wives, parents and children, employers and employees, particularly at this difficult time. We pray for families on their holidays, for families who are not able to go on the holidays they were hoping for. We pray for children who have been from away from school for so long. We pray for those who are struggling financially or just finding it difficult to love those they have been locked down with. We pray for employees and employees, those who have made, been made redundant, for those employers who have had to make people redundant, for those who are losing businesses and income. And we pray for those places where relationships have broken down and there is no love between them. Lord Jesus, we pray that where there is injury, that you help us so pardon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our our benefits, our churches, for those who attend and for those who are newly attend online. We pray for our diocese, for our bishops, Tim, David and Debbie, for our parishes around us, our neighbours and our area dean, James. We pray for the life of our churches in this new and strange time. We pray for a way forward. We think of all of those whose faith has been tested during this lockdown period. For those new to faith. For those who aren't quite there yet. And we would pray, Lord Jesus, where there is doubt and where there are questions, you would let us sow faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember with thanksgiving those who have died. Remembering particularly those whose funerals have taken place this week. For the families and friends 
for all who grieved loved ones. For all those overshadowed by loss or loneliness. And we pray for all who are in need at this moment, all who are unwell, who are suffering in any way. We think of all of those and lift to God now those in our own hearts and minds who are suffering, those we worry about. We pray for families and friends. And Lord Jesus, we pray that where there is despair, you would help us give hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we think of ourselves, our own self-centeredness, our faltering attempts to serve you. And we pray, Lord, that you would transfigure us into your likeness and make us channels of your peace and witnesses to your kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the collect for today. Father in heaven, whose son Jesus Christ was wonderfully transfigured before chosen witnesses upon the holy mountain and spoke of the exodus he would accomplish at Jerusalem. Give us strength so to hear his voice and bear our cross that in the world to come we may see him as he is who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.